Summary Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself, Joe Dispenza. Book link. Click here. Here's a summary of the praise for breaking the habit of being yourself. Judy Thorloff, MD praises the book for empowering readers to let go of negative beliefs and embrace positive ones. She says it will help you become your best, freest self. Roland McCready, PhD says the book explains subtle shifts in brain usage that can lead to positive life changes. He calls it cutting edge and user friendly. Lynn McDaggart says the book carries a simple but powerful message that our thoughts today determine how we live tomorrow. Greg Braden praises the book as a powerful blend of leading edge science and real life applications. He says it can show us how to consciously rewire a neural network for creativity and joy. Dawson Church, PhD, calls the book a manual for becoming a divine creator. He says it shows how to break free of emotions to create a happy, healthy, and abundant life. Alberto Violdo, PhD praises the book for showing us how to dream our world into being. In the foreword, Daniel G. Amen, MD says our brain is involved in everything we do, including how we think, feel, act, and socialize. He says that we are happier, healthier, and more successful when the brain is healthy. He praises the book for showing how negative thoughts and past programming can affect the brain. He says the book can help retrain the brain to overcome past conditioning. In summary, the praise focuses on the book's ability to empower readers to overcome negative patterns and conditioning through thinking and brain usage shifts. Reviewers call the book cutting edge, practical, and able to help create positive life changes. Joe Dispenza, a chiropractor and educator, wrote this book to provide practical guidance on optimizing your brain and changing your mind. His approach is based on science and his experience helping people heal and improve their lives. The brain's physical structure and function, the hardware, interacts with how it is shaped through experiences and thoughts, the software. Both can be changed, which can have a significant impact. Traumatic experiences can negatively shape the brain, but positive thoughts and experiences can rewire it well. Dispenza's research uses SPECT scans to study how the brain functions and changes. These scans show how brain injuries, drugs, medication, unhealthy lifestyles, stress, and negative thoughts can damage the brain. But they also show how positive lifestyle changes, habits, and beliefs can heal and optimize the brain. Dispenza changed his unhealthy brain and habits after seeing his SPECT scan at age 37. He optimized his brain through better diet, exercise, sleep, meditation, addressing past emotional hurts, and positive thinking. His brain aged in reverse over 20 years as a result. This book aims to teach readers practical ways to change their minds and optimize their brains and health. Dispenza wants to share the possibilities from new research in fields like neuroscience, epigenetics, and physics. By applying these principles, people have experienced healings, solved problems, enriched their lives, and achieved success. The book makes complex scientific concepts simple and approachable for readers. Dispenza invites readers to experiment with the ideas and see how changing their inner thoughts and experiences leads to changes in their outer world and environment. Readers can become mystics and scientists in their own lives by connecting emerging science and age-old wisdom. An open and willing mind is required to understand and apply these concepts for personal change. Letting go of conditioned beliefs and being brave enough to try new ways of thinking can lead to empowerment and more extraordinary life. Looking deeply at one's thoughts and origins is critical. Here is a summary of the key ideas. Our current paradigms and models of reality are breaking down. It is time for new ways of thinking to emerge. But changing our deeply ingrained beliefs and habits is difficult. We usually only change when we experience a crisis that forces us to question our assumptions. It is better to choose to switch before reaching a crisis point. Change may be uncomfortable, but we can do it with joy and inspiration. Parta discusses the science behind the change. Quantum physics shows that our attention and consciousness shape our reality. We must overcome our environment, our body's conditioning, and our fixation on time to change. We must shift from living in survival mode to living in a state of creation. Part 2 focuses on our three brains, thinking, doing, and being. When we focus our attention, we can move from thinking to being without taking action. Our mind and body become one in this state, and we can mentally rehearse desired experiences. This rewrites our subconscious programs. We can break free of our deeply ingrained emotional patterns and close the gap between our inner and outer selves. Nothing external can remove our past feelings, we must liberate our emotional energy. This allows us to become more transparent and authentic. The key to change is focusing our attention, entering a meditative state of being, and mentally rehearsing the experiences we desire to have. This reprograms our mind and body to a new form of being. By changing our mind, we change our reality. The key idea is that our thoughts shape our reality. 
We can all create positive change in our lives by changing our thoughts and beliefs. Traditionally, science viewed matter and thought as separate. The new understanding is that thought and concern are interconnected, our thoughts influence the material world. By understanding this, we can use our mind to create our desired reality. We all want to become an idealized version of ourselves, physically, emotionally, or spiritually. But we often fail to change because we need to fully believe that our thoughts create a reality. To change, we need a new understanding of ourselves and the world. This book aims to provide that new understanding, that our thoughts have real consequences and shape our reality. If we truly believe this, we would be cautious about our thoughts and focus on what we want rather than our problems. Our lives reflect our views, for better or worse. But we can create a new reality by changing our thoughts. We are all blessed with the ability to improve our lives through our constructive thoughts and efforts. We don't have to accept our current reality, we can make a new one whenever we choose. Our ideas influence our lives. The key is to fully accept and commit to living by the truth that our thoughts shape our world. With this understanding, we can create real positive change. The author wants to convince readers that our beliefs shape our reality and destiny. You need to change your beliefs about how the world works to change your life. For centuries, the dominant belief was that mind and matter were separate. Scientists like Descartes and Newton promoted a mechanistic view of the universe where physical reality followed orderly, predictable laws. The reason was considered outside the physical world and not subject to scientific study. Einstein's theory of relativity and the development of quantum physics challenged this mechanistic view. Einstein showed that energy and matter are interchangeable. Quantum physics revealed that reality is paradoxical at the subatomic level, light and matter can behave as particles and waves. Atoms are mostly space and energy, not solid matter. Quantum physics also showed that the subatomic world behaves differently than the macro world of classical physics. Events at the subatomic level are unpredictable and defy the boundaries of time and space. Objects in the macro world follow consistent, predictable laws. The implication is that to change your life, you need to adopt a quantum view of reality where your thoughts and beliefs shape your experience of the physical world. Mind and matter are interconnected, not separate. Your reality is fluid and responsive, not fixed and mechanical. That covers the key points the author is making about how our perspective of reality has evolved and why adopting a quantum view of reality, where the mind shapes matter, is critical to changing your life. Please let me know if you want me to explain or expand on any summary part. At the subatomic level, particles like electrons constantly appear and disappear, transforming between matter and energy. They pop in and out of existence in our three-dimensional reality, disappearing into the quantum field. According to quantum physics, particles exist as probabilities or possibilities until they are observed. When an observer focuses on a particle, it collapses from a wave of options into a physical event at a specific point in space and time. This is known as the observer effect. The observer effect demonstrates that the observer's mind influences the behavior of energy and matter. There are infinite possible realities in the quantum field, by observing, we collapse those possibilities into the reality we experience. Everything in the physical universe comprises subatomic particles that exist as waves of possibilities until observed. So, any possible reality we can imagine already exists in the quantum field a possibility. By mastering the observer effect, we can influence which realities we experience. Consciousness and matter are deeply interconnected at a quantum level. Mind influence is valued because consciousness is energy at the subatomic scale, and energy possesses consciousness. We are mindful matter. The quantum field contains all possibilities as waves of energy. By observing, our minds cause these waves to collapse into the particles that make up our physical experiences and events. We shape the quantum clay into our reality. Everything in the universe, including us, is connected at a quantum level. We broadcast our energetic signatures that carry information about our states of mind. We are also entangled across space and time through quantum entanglement. What we do to others we do to ourselves. Some experiments suggest our minds can reach into the past through quantum entanglement and retrocausality. For example, one study found that praying for hospital patients in the 1990s seemed to benefit them at the time, even though the prayers happened years later. Our minds can transcend the ordinary flow of time. A study in 2000 showed that intentions, thoughts and feelings can affect the past. The researchers analyzed the results statistically and found that the effects were beyond coincidence. This indicates that our mental states can influence the present and future and the past. According to quantum physics, all possibilities exist simultaneously. Our thoughts and feelings affect all aspects of life across space and time. Our state of being, consisting of our thoughts, feelings and physical body, influences the external world. 
Studies have shown that thoughts and feelings can affect matter at a quantum level. In an experiment, groups held DNA vials while in different mental states. Those in a state of elevated positive emotion and intention could change the shape of the DNA, while the other groups were not. This shows that the quantum field responds to a coherent state of being, not just thoughts or feelings alone. Our thoughts send out an electrical signal and our feelings a magnetic signal. Together, they generate an electromagnetic signature that influences everything. We are constantly broadcasting this signature, whether consciously or not. Matching our signature to an existing possibility in the quantum field can draw that event into our life. To change our lives, we need to change our energy, thoughts, feelings, and behaviors. We must become someone else and generate a new electromagnetic signature. When we match that unique signature to a potential reality, we will be pulled toward it or it will find us. Our thoughts and feelings must be coherent or aligned for our mental states to influence reality. When they are out of sync, we send a weak, incoherent signal that does not manifest. Coherence is needed to broadcast a strong indication that can match existing possibilities. An example is given of a woman who prayed and thought of a new life but felt guilty, sending an incoherent signal that did not manifest her desires. Coherence between thoughts and feelings is critical. Here is a summary of reasons to feel guilty. Your thoughts and feelings are not aligned. If you want one thing but feel another way, you send mixed messages to the universe. This prevents you from attracting what you desire. You are trying to predict or control how your desired outcome will manifest. This relies on Newtonian physics of cause and effect. To utilize quantum physics and the law of attraction, you must let go of how your desire will come about. It would help if you were open to surprises. You are not feeling gratitude for your desired outcome before it has manifested. Gratitude, like all emotions, communicates to the universe that your desire has already been fulfilled. Feeling gratitude before receiving helps collapse the possibilities of the quantum field into your desired reality. You need to recognize the universal intelligence that underlies all of reality, including your own body and mind. This intelligence responds to your thoughts, feelings, and state of being. When you are aligned with this intelligence through love, gratitude and openness, it will orchestrate events to match your desires. You are not emulating the properties of universal consciousness. This includes love, mindfulness, and openness. When your mind matches the universe's mind, it will create your desires. It would help if you become an extension of this creative intelligence. In summary, to utilize the quantum field and law of attraction, you must align your thoughts and feelings, let go of control, feel gratitude before receiving, recognize the universal intelligence all around and within you, and emulate the qualities of that creative consciousness. By making these leaps of faith, you open yourself up to surprising manifestations and become a quantum creator. We attract what we broadcast into our lives through our thoughts and feelings. We will attract more suffering if we hold on to suffering and negative emotions. We will attract better outcomes if we change our thoughts and feelings to be more positive. The universe responds to the energy and signals we send out. It is not punishing us for past actions but responding to what we are putting out now. We can change our thoughts and signals to produce the outcomes we want. To access the quantum field of possibilities and connect with universal intelligence, we must move beyond our senses and linear time. We must let go of identification with our bodies, environment, and past-slash-future. We need to enter a state of pure consciousness. The quantum field exists beyond space and time. Anything in the area of possibilities has yet to materialize into reality, so it does not have a specific location or temporal existence. We need to enter a similar state beyond space and time. To access the field we are always connected to the quantum field, but we need to learn how to communicate more effectively. We can access the area through states where we lose awareness of our body, environment, and the passing of time. Mind and matter are inseparable. We need to change our minds, thoughts, and feelings to produce changes in our material reality. Instead of feeling limited by circumstances outside of us, we can change from within. We can change ahead of time and see those changes reflected in our external world. The key is to move into a state of consciousness that allows us to connect with universal intelligence, access the field of possibilities, and send a clear signal of what we intend to create. We can then observe the feedback and results in our external world. Here is a summary of the key ideas discussed in the passage. Our thoughts and mindset profoundly shape our external environment and life experiences. We can change our reality and life experiences by changing our thoughts and mental habits. We tend to get caught in repetitive cycles of thinking and feeling that reinforce our current circumstances. We need to change our habitual thoughts and feelings to create real change. Most people are overly focused on and limited by their environment, physical body, and present circumstances. To change meaningfully, 
We need to expand beyond these limitations. We need to develop an idealized vision of ourself that is greater than our current environment, bodily habits, and period. Our memories and past experiences make up our internal environment. Much like our external environment, our internal environment needs to be overcome through a change in mindset and mental habits. We need to stop constantly revisiting our memories and experiences. Significant life changes require a shift to a new state of being. We need to inhabit and become the kind of person living the life we aspire to. This process is challenging but the only way to manifest real change. Several examples are provided of people using visualization and a change in mindset to manifest meaningful changes in their external environment and life experiences. This highlights the possibility for all of us to do the same. The key message is that we can shape our reality through our thoughts and mindset. By changing our mental habits and becoming the kind of person living the life we aspire to, we can overcome our environment and manifest profound life changes. But this requires discipline and dedication to interrupt our habitual thoughts and patterns. Our everyday habits of thinking and feeling repetitively originate from the brain, which stores all our life experiences, knowledge, and memories. The brain is a reflection of our external environment and interactions. As we go about our daily lives, encountering familiar people and places, our brain activates the same neural pathways representing our memories and past experiences. This causes us to reproduce the same thoughts, feelings, and reactions, creating the same reality and experiences day after day. Our environment and thoughts become rigid and unchanged. We follow highly routine and automatic daily behaviors that keep us rooted in the past and maintain the status quo. The input, environment and experiences, remains the same, so the output, thoughts, feelings, reality, remains the same. Repeatedly activating the same neural pathways causes them to become hardwired together, making those thoughts, feelings, and experiences a habit. We become neurochemically attached to the conditions of our lives perceiving our inner minds and outer worlds as inseparable. In essence, we get caught in a loop of reacting to our familiar environment with the same mindset, which then recreates that same environment. This cycle causes us to think in the box and form a chronic sense of self or personality. To summarize in brief, our repetitive thoughts and ways of thinking originate from the brain's tendency to activate familiar neural pathways in response to our routine environment and behaviors. This causes habitual looping between the inner and outer where the same input creates the same output, and we become neurochemically hardwired to certain mindsets and conditions. Breaking out of this loop requires conscious change at the mind and neural functioning level. Our subjective mind and biases color our reality and perceptions. This causes us to get stuck in repetitive thought patterns and habits. We become trapped in a loop, reacting to the exact circumstances and environments. To change our lives, we must change how we think, act, and feel, our state of being and personality. We must become someone else. Great people think beyond their circumstances and environment. They envision a future reality and act as if it is already true. Examples include Gandhi, Martin Luther King Jr., and Joan of Arc. Their dreams seemed unrealistic and nonsensical to others because they were focused on a reality beyond the senses. We can change our brains and lives through mental rehearsal, repeatedly imagining an action or experience. This can reorganize our neural connections as if the event happened. Our thoughts can become our experiences. Whether changing our brains through physical or mental means, the process involves gaining knowledge, receiving instruction, paying attention, and repetition. The people who mentally rehearsed piano skills developed the same neural changes as those who physically practiced. Their brains existed in the future ahead of the experience. Due to our advanced human brain, especially the frontal lobe, we can make thoughts more real than anything the senses report. We must use this ability to transcend our environment and repetitive thinking to create a new future. Our mind must get ahead of the external world and physical experience. The key message is that by harnessing the power of our mind, we can overcome our circumstances, environment, habits, and repetitive thoughts. We must envision a new reality and think and act as if it is already here. Mental rehearsal of our goals and desired experiences can help make this vision real and rewire our brains ahead of physical changes in our external world. We can transcend our present situations and develop our lives by developing our minds. The brain and body interact through electrochemical signals. When you have a thought, your brain releases chemicals that cause a reaction in your body. Your body then sends signals back to the brain, confirming that it feels the way your brain thinks. There are three types of chemicals involved in this process, neurotransmitters, chemical messengers between brain and nervous system neurons. They control functions like excitability, sleepiness, etc. Neuropeptides, chemicals that communicate between the brain and body. They signal the body to produce hormones that influence our feelings. Hormones, 
chemicals related to feelings in the body. Neuropeptides stimulate their release. This chemical communication between the brain and body creates a feedback loop. You think thoughts that produce chemicals that make you feel a certain way. Then you begin to believe in a way that matches those feelings. Your state of emerging from this loop. Thoughts are related to the mind and brain, and feelings are related to the body. As your emotions match your thoughts, your thoughts also match your feelings. This process allows your body to prepare for events you imagine in your mind physically. By repeatedly thinking about something, you can rewire your brain as if you've experienced it and prepare your body for it. In summary, you can influence your brain and body through your thoughts. By changing your thoughts, you change your brain and body, allowing you to break the habit of being yourself. Our thoughts, feelings, and actions align when in a particular state of mind. When the mind and body are working together, it creates a state of being. Repeatedly thinking and feeling in a certain way leads to a chronic state of being that becomes part of our identity. For example, I am angry or insecure. Years of the same thoughts, feelings, and actions create an ingrained state of being that we define ourselves by. For example, I have always been lazy or I am anxious. These states of being are created by the mind and body constantly communicating and influencing each other. An example is getting angry while driving and thinking about a confrontation with a co-worker. The angry thoughts produce mad feelings, which then fuel more angry thoughts. The body and mind get stuck in a feedback loop, making changing our state of being complex. The body has memorized the feeling of anger, and the reason follows suit. It is difficult to change from a chronic state of being because the body has memorized it. For example, someone who has thought and felt like a victim for 20 plus years will have difficulty changing their mindset and behaviors. The body remembers the feelings and drives the mind. By our mid-30s, our identity and habits are primarily set. About 95% of who we are is a set of automated programs, thoughts, feelings, and actions that we repeat unconsciously. We operate on autopilot. Only about 5% of our mind is consciously aware. When the body has memorized thoughts, feelings, or actions, it becomes habitual and automatic. The conscious mind is no longer in control. For example, a mother drives her kids to school while doing various tasks. Her body has memorized how to do them without conscious thought. She is operating from habit and autopilot. To change, we must break the habit of being ourselves, of remaining stuck in ingrained, automated states of being and unaware patterns of thinking, feeling, and acting. We must become more conscious and intentionally choose new ways of thinking and being. Our bodies can memorize actions and skills to the point that they become automatic and subconscious. Examples include dialing phone numbers, entering passwords, or locker combinations. Even though we may not consciously remember the numbers, our bodies have memorized them. 95% of who we are by age 35 exists in the subconscious mind. Our subconscious automatic behaviors, reactions, and habits are in control most of the time. Our conscious mind thinks it's in charge but is heavily influenced by the subconscious. It will resist when we try to regain control from the subconscious mind. It will come up with many reasons why we should keep the same. It wants to maintain the familiar patterns it has memorized. Breaking subconscious habits and patterns feels chaotic and uncomfortable. To change subconscious patterns, we have to reprogram our subconscious mind. We have to unlearn old habits and relearn new ones. This brings the conscious and subconscious into harmony. The example of guilt is used to illustrate how subconscious patterns work. If we frequently feel guilty over many years, it becomes an automatic subconscious reaction. Our cells get accustomed to the chemical signals of guilt. They require stronger guilt feelings to activate. We get addicted to shame. When we decide to stop habitual feelings of guilt, our cells don't get the chemical signals they expect. They express concern and alarm. Our intention to have more positive thoughts conflicts with the subconsciously programmed expectation of guilty feelings. Our cells have memorized one part that fits into the habitual pattern, but we have now provided a different part that doesn't work. This disrupts until new habits are learned. Our cells are constantly monitoring our thoughts and reactions. They know our habitual patterns exceptionally well. When those patterns are broken, our cells react strongly until new habits are established. The passage describes the interplay between the body and the mind and maintaining habitual thought patterns and emotional states. The body has become accustomed to specific chemical patterns corresponding to particular thoughts and feelings. When a person attempts to change their thoughts and feelings, the body protests and tries to convince the mind to return to the familiar state. The cells in the body are used to producing certain chemicals that match habitual thought patterns and emotions. They send messages to the brain, urging it to return to familiar thoughts and feelings so the body can maintain its chemical balance. 
These messages from the body come through a fast track directly up the spinal cord and also through a slow track as the body produces chemicals and circulates them in the bloodstream. In response, the mind starts having self-doubting, guilty, and fearful thoughts in an effort to return to its habitual state. The passage argues that simply attempting positive thinking is not enough to overcome these ingrained bodily habits and thought patterns. The body needs to be reconditioned through a new emotional state. Emotions are created from the accumulation of sensory information and experiences. The body becomes conditioned to certain emotions through repeated experiences and then the repetition of thoughts about those experiences. The resulting emotions and thought patterns limit a person to recreating their past. The key to change is gaining conscious awareness of these habitual tendencies and unmemorizing the unwanted emotions by introducing new emotions and new thought patterns. The body must be given new instructions to overcome its inclination to maintain the familiar chemical state. Simply declaring a desire to change is not enough. The body and mind must work together through introducing new sensory information and experiences that lead to new emotional patterns and corresponding thought habits. Emotions created from experiences in the external world and those fabricated internally by thoughts alone feel the same to our body. If we continually relive negative past experiences by dwelling on memories and thoughts, our body is fooled into believing it is re-experiencing the past. Our body becomes anchored in the past. Most people live in the past and resist living in the future. Our bodies become addicted to familiar feelings from the past, making it hard to embrace new possibilities. Overcoming this habit of being stuck in the past is difficult but necessary for change. There is a myth that genes create disease and determine our destiny. In reality, less than 5% of diseases are from single gene disorders, 95% result from lifestyle, stress, and environment. While environment influences our internal state, we can control our inner environment to overcome environmental effects. Genes are expressed when cells produce proteins. As organisms face environmental challenges over generations, genes are activated to produce proteins that help them adapt. Genes encode conditions of the external world. However, genes are changeable and activated differently at different times in response to experiences, growth, learning, stress, emotions, etc. Epigenetics shows that the environment controls gene activity. While DNA provides a blueprint, Epigenetic changes in how DNA is expressed can be passed down through generations without changing the DNA sequence itself. The environment and experiences can essentially mark or tag the DNA to signal genes to be activated or deactivated, which influences how the blueprint is read. In summary, we are not doomed by genetic determinism. Our experiences, perceptions, and behaviors can trigger epigenetic changes that signal our genes. We have more influence over our genetic expression than previously understood. Our destiny is not predetermined, we can signal our genes to rewrite our future. Genes are like blueprints that provide instructions for building proteins in our cells. However, the expression of genes can be modified by environmental and epigenetic factors. This means that while the DNA sequence remains the same, the proteins that are produced can vary based on signals from the environment. Our thoughts, feelings, and behaviors send signals to our cells that can influence how our genes are expressed, essentially allowing us to modify our genetic destiny. Repeating the same emotional states and thought patterns over long periods of time can lead to disease by causing certain genes to become overexpressed. However, we have the ability to activate new genetic potentials by adopting new ways of thinking and elevated emotional states. A study found that diabetics who watched a comedy show were able to alter the expression of 23 genes involved in blood sugar regulation and lower their blood sugar levels. This demonstrates how emotions can directly influence genetic expression. Mentally rehearsing and emotionally embracing future events may allow us to signal our genes as if those events have already happened. By conditioning our body and mind in this way, we could potentially drive changes in genetic expression and even physical changes before those events come to pass in reality. Research shows that mental rehearsal of physical activities alone can drive changes in the body. A study found that subjects who only mentally rehearsed finger exercises for 15 minutes a day had changes in muscle strength and electromyography results comparable to subjects who physically performed the exercises. This demonstrates the power of thought alone to change the body. In summary, our thoughts, feelings, and perceptions do not just shape our reality, they have the power to shape our biology by influencing how our genes express themselves. By adopting new patterns of thinking and elevated emotional states, we can overcome genetic predispositions, activate new potentials, and literally transform our mind and body. Mental rehearsal may be one technique for driving changes in gene expression and biology through the mind-body connection. The study involved three groups, one group physically exercised one finger on their left hand, 
for five one-hour training sessions per week for four weeks. A second group mentally rehearsed the same exercises, on the same timetable, without physically activating any muscles in the finger. A control group exercised neither their fingers nor their minds. The results show, the physical exercise group exhibited 30% greater finger strength. No surprise, physical exercise increases strength. The mental rehearsal group demonstrated a 22% increase in muscle strength even without physical exercise. Mental effort alone caused physical changes. The mind and mental efforts can produce quantifiable physical effects on the body. The body changed just from thoughts and imagination. Other studies show similar results for bicep curls. Both physical exercise and mental rehearsal increased bicep strength. Mental rehearsal alone causes physiological changes. When the body changes just from thoughts to appear as if an experience happened, from a quantum perspective the event has already happened in reality. The mental and physical changes show evidence the event occurred in consciousness and physical reality. When you have mentally rehearsed a future event until your brain and body have changed, that event will then find you, often in an unexpected way. This shows the event came from your interaction with greater consciousness, inspiring you to do more. The key point is that mental rehearsal and imagination alone can cause real physical and biological changes to the body. From a quantum perspective, this means the imagined events have actually already happened in some reality. By changing our minds and mental state, we can change our physical bodies and experience of reality. An emotional reaction that lasts for hours to days is called a mood. When a mood lingers for weeks or months, it becomes a temperament. If it persists for years, it turns into a personality trait. Our personalities are anchored in our past emotions and reactions. To change our personalities, we have to move out of the past. We can get stuck and prevent change by living in a predictable future based on the past. We imagine an unwanted future event and cause our body to experience the stress of that event before it happens. Our mind and body get polarized, moving between the past and future, missing the present moment. Overcoming this requires living beyond time. Another way we create the same future is by anticipating the familiar events of each day so much that our body goes through the motions mechanically. Our body has been trained to live in the future, running on unconscious programs while we sit back. Living beyond time is required to overcome this. We create futures that match our familiar past by the thoughts and emotions we have going into an event. If we expect an event to be miserable based on past experiences, it likely will be. We alternate between dreading the future and reliving the past, creating more of the same. Instead, we can choose to live in a desired new future now by feeling the emotions of that future in the present. This signals to the quantum field that the event has already happened. This is how people are able to create change and transcend limits. Two ways we can transcend the environment, body, and time, the big three, are peak experiences and ordinary altered states of consciousness. Peak experiences are transcendent, flow-like states where we feel beyond limits. Ordinary altered states include being totally absorbed in an activity, meditation, creativity, etc. These states show us we can go beyond our usual sense of self and ego. Humans can activate the stress response through thought alone, unlike animals who primarily activate it in response to present dangers. Humans can activate it in anticipation of future events or in recollection of past events. Repeatedly activating the stress response is harmful to humans. The body is not designed to handle repeated or chronic activation of this response. It can lead to health issues like high blood pressure, immune disorders, and other problems. Activating the stress response releases chemicals and hormones in the body to prepare for fight or flight. But in many cases, humans cannot actually fight or flee the situation. So the body stays in an emergency state, directing energy away from other systems. This can be maladaptive and unhealthy. The stress response creates psychological effects like anger, fear, anxiety, sadness, and negativity. Because humans often live in anticipation of future stresses or recollection of past stresses, negativity and difficult emotions tend to predominate. In contrast, living in a creative state of mind leads to more positive emotions and physiological effects. Creativity helps transcend worries and stresses, allowing a person to become absorbed in the present moment. This can have restorative effects on the body and mind. Overall, survival mode tends to focus on negativity, stress, and emergency, while creative mode focuses on positivity, growth, and fulfillment of human potential. Finding a better balance between these two modes is important for well-being. The body, the environment, and time are the three most important things we focus on when we're in survival mode. This causes us to be materialists, focused on the physical realm and defining ourselves by external factors. Living in survival mode and being focused on the big three causes us to forget our true self, 
which is a consciousness connected to a field of intelligence. We become disconnected from this universal intelligence. The slower, lower frequency emotions like anger and suffering ground us in the physical and make us feel more like matter. The higher frequency emotions like love and joy make us feel more like energy. By reducing lower frequency emotions, we can ascend to a higher level of consciousness. We become addicted to the rush of energy and emotions we get from being in survival mode and focusing on problems. We keep stressful situations in our lives to feed this addiction. We also become addicted to familiar thoughts and environments. This reinforces our limited identity as a somebody. When we are overly focused on survival, our ego becomes selfish, self-centered, and concerned primarily with itself. It tries to control outcomes and is disconnected from the greater part of reality. What we focus our awareness on becomes our reality. If we focus on the physical, that is what we experience. To transcend survival mode, we must forget about external factors like people, problems, possessions, places, and time. We must lay down our selfish ego and detach from trying to control outcomes. We must open to a greater reality beyond the physical. To live in a creative state, you have to transcend your usual self and ego. When you are creating, you forget about yourself and your habitual way of thinking and being. You enter a state of pure awareness and consciousness, detached from your body, environment, time, and ego. This allows you to access the quantum field and make changes to your body, environment, and timeline. The frontal lobe of the brain is responsible for creative thinking and the ability to change. It has three main functions, metacognition, the ability to become self-aware and observe your own thoughts and behaviors. This allows you to examine your current state and decide how you no longer want to be. You can then make a plan to change your thoughts and behaviors to produce better outcomes. Speculation, the ability to imagine new possibilities and new ways of being. This is where we dream, hope, wish, create, invent, and innovate. We can envision new potentials for our life and future. Intention and attention, the ability to focus your attention and mental energy on what you want to create or change. Whatever you place your attention on, you give energy and power to. You demonstrate intention and will to bring what you want into being. By using the frontal lobe in these ways, you can become aware of your current habitual self, envision a new self you want to be, and focus your intention and attention to make that change happen. This is how you break the habit of being yourself and create a new self. You are who you are because of what you believe about yourself. Your beliefs shape your reality, whether you are aware of them or not. To change your reality, observe your unconscious thoughts, behaviors, and emotional reactions. Become more self-aware and attentive. The more you observe yourself, the more you awaken from the unconscious mind. Once you observe your unconscious states, consciously inhibit thoughts, actions, and emotions you don't want. This prunes away the neural connections related to your old personality and habits. You lose your mind, your old way of thinking. Create a new mind by thinking about new ways of being. Use your frontal lobe to imagine new possibilities and ask questions about what you really want. The answers will rewire your brain to a new mindset. When creating a new mind, make your thoughts more real than anything else. Your frontal lobe can lower activity in the rest of your brain so your thoughts become your experience. You feel like that new reality is happening now. This rewrites your subconscious programs. When you become nobody or no thing in no time, you stop creating your usual chemical and emotional signature. Your survival thinking and old identity turn off. The energy bound to your old emotional self is freed up, moving from lower frequencies of survival emotions to higher frequencies of elevated emotions. With your old energy transformed, you are liberated from emotional bondage. You see new possibilities and are quantum observers of a new destiny. This healing frees your mind. That covers the key steps and process for losing your old mind and creating a new mind to transform your reality. Let me know if you would like me to clarify or expand on any part of the summary. The brain can be thought of as having three main parts that facilitate the progression from thinking to doing to being, the neocortex or thinking brain, responsible for conscious thought, identity, reasoning, planning, and communication. It processes knowledge and experiences, allowing us to learn new ideas and form new neural connections. Once we have the knowledge, the neocortex then prompts us to apply it. The limbic system or emotional brain, generates and regulates emotions and the chemicals that accompany them. It is responsible for survival instincts and maintaining the body's homeostasis. The limbic system produces the same chemical responses for imagined experiences as for real experiences. The cerebellum or subconscious brain, coordinates body movements and balances the body. It is the seat of habits, skills, and the autonomic nervous system. Information is processed in the cerebellum before entering conscious awareness. 
Repeated experiences become automatic and subconscious over time as neural connections are strengthened in the cerebellum. By using our mind, the neocortex, to think about a new ideal self we want to become, we can then prompt our body, the limbic system and cerebellum, to become that new self by applying what we have learned through changing our actions and behaviors. Repeating this process causes the new self to become automatic and subconscious, moving us into a state of being where mind and body are unified. The key to this progression lies in the brain's neuroplasticity, meaning we can rewire existing neural connections and form new ones at any age. The summary outlines how we can use our thinking, neocortex, emotional, limbic system, and subconscious, cerebellum, brains to facilitate real and lasting change from thinking to doing to being. By gaining knowledge of an ideal new self, we can then apply that knowledge to create new experiences, behaviors, and habits which ultimately transform us into that new self as our mind and body become one. You acquire knowledge by reading books on compassion. This allows you to form new neural connections in your neocortex or thinking brain. You now understand compassion intellectually. You are invited to dinner with your mother-in-law who you dislike. Normally, you would feel tense, jittery and want to leave when around her. However, you remember the knowledge you gained about compassion. You decide to apply this knowledge to have a new experience with your mother-in-law. You begin by thinking about the old you that reacts negatively to your mill and wanting to become a new you. Your frontal lobe starts to unwire the neural circuits connected to the old you. You are creating a new mind. You plan how you want to think, feel and act with compassion towards your mill. You want to modify your behavior and reactions to have a new emotional experience. At the dinner, your new thoughts and actions produce new emotions in the limbic brain. You feel more at ease and connected to your mill. This new emotional experience creates new neural networks reflecting this event. With repetition, the cerebellum can memorize this new state of being compassionate as an innate program. The compassion becomes second nature and subconscious. In summary, you went from thinking about compassion intellectually to applying this knowledge in experience and embodied this learning emotionally. With practice, you can reach a state of being compassionate where it becomes an implicit part of you. The three brains, neocortex, Limbic brain and cerebellum work together to take you from thinking to doing to being. Knowledge is for the mind, experience is for the body and being is for the subconscious. To go from thinking to doing requires effort and practice. We tend to prefer staying in the realm of thought and familiar feelings. By interrupting habitual thoughts and behaviors and rehearsing new ones, we can create new neurological connections and a new sense of self. Observing our habitual thoughts and behaviors allows us to become aware of our unconscious self. Mentally rehearsing a new way of being creates new neural connections that make that new way of being feel real and familiar. When we embody new knowledge through experience, we teach our body what our mind has learned. We go from thinking to doing. Having an experience that creates a new emotion and memory can change our genes and biology. Mastery means being able to reproduce a state like compassion at will, independent of external conditions. We have two memory systems, declarative, explicit, and non-declarative, implicit. Declarative includes knowledge and experiences we can declare. Non-declarative includes habits, skills, and automatic behaviors. Progressing from thinking to doing to being involves using our neocortex, thinking, limbic system, feeling, and cerebellum, being. Wisdom comes from gaining knowledge through repeated experience. When a state like compassion feels as natural as our habitual states, we have become wise. In summary, by learning, practicing, and embodying new ways of thinking and being, we can transform ourselves at a biological and neurological level. We can evolve from merely understanding compassion intellectually to spontaneously feeling and expressing compassion. This allows us to move through life with an open heart and mind. The three brains, thinking brain, allows us to mentally rehearse and simulate new experiences. By activating the frontal lobe, we can create new circuits and thus a new mind. This new mind then gives us a model to create a new reality. Emotional brain, when we produce emotions through thoughts alone, our body cannot distinguish between real and imagined events. The emotions we create through mental simulation produce real chemical changes in the body. Body's brain, the body responds to the new mind and emotions by producing biological changes. These changes provide physical evidence that we have changed from a neurological and genetic perspective. Progressing from thinking to being, we start by thinking about qualities we want to embody, like happiness or courage. This activates new neural circuits. With practice, these thoughts become experiences. The end product is the feeling or emotion. Now the mind and body are working together. When the mind and body are aligned through thought and emotion, we enter a new state of being. We have made real changes to the brain, biology, and genetics. This new state of being will lead to new thoughts and actions that align with it. 
We have broken the habit of being our old self. A new state of being will create a new reality. The changes we make internally will produce external effects according to the quantum model. Sometimes we have progressed from thinking to being, we feel different in a lasting way. The same experiences no longer produce the same reactions. New, unexpected things show up in our life as a result of our new state of being. We have produced a coherent signal in the quantum field through aligned thoughts and emotions. We have moved beyond the Newtonian notion of cause and effect. Rather than being regulated by external events, we are creating our own thoughts, emotions, and reality. That covers the key highlights on how we can use our three brains to progress from thinking to being, and ultimately create a new self and new reality. Please let me know if you would like me to clarify or expand on any part of the summary. We live in a duality as two separate entities, how we appear to others and who we really are. How we appear as the facade or image we project to the world to show others who we want them to think we are. Who we really are is how we feel inside, especially when we are alone and not distracted. It is our familiar emotions and state of being. A gap forms between these two selves based on the emotions we have memorized from past experiences. The bigger the gap, the more addicted we are to those emotions. We rely on the external world and what's familiar to reaffirm who we think we are. Our identity becomes attached to external factors. To bridge the gap, we must not rely on anything external to define us or make us feel a certain way. We have to embrace the present moment. Dropping into our heart, feeling gratitude and love without needing a reason allows us to access higher frequencies and new potentials in the quantum field. Conditioning our body to experience the emotions of an ideal reality in the present moment gives us a new state of being from which to create. Once in this new state of being, our thoughts and actions will align with it. But we must break the habit of being our old self. Liberation comes from no longer being a somebody, an identity dependent on external factors. We access our creative power in all possibilities. The key message is that we must let go of our attachment to external stimuli, drop into the present moment and condition our body to experience the emotions we want to create from, joy, gratitude, love. This allows us to become conscious creators rather than creatures of habit. We break free from limitation and open ourselves up to infinite potentials. But first we must relinquish our addiction to who we think we are, the limited self that relies on external factors to feel and be a certain way. Our personality and sense of identity is completely tied to and defined by the external world around us, our possessions, relationships, experiences, occupations, achievements, etc. We rely on these things to conceal our true self and feelings of insecurity, inadequacy or emptiness. Our true self is the vulnerable, emotional part of us that we want to hide from the world. We create a false self or image to portray to others instead. This is especially common in our youth when we are insecure and seeking to fit in. Traumatic or emotionally charged life events from our early years contribute to shaping our personality and sense of identity. We keep busy with external pursuits and stimulation to avoid facing the deep emotions related to these events. By our mid-30s to 40s, we have experienced much of what life has to offer. The external world no longer adequately distracts us from our true self and buried feelings. Some double down on external pursuits and stimulation while others start questioning life's meaning and purpose. Those who continue relying on external sources for self-definition and distraction become dependent and trapped in a hedonistic cycle, needing increasing levels of stimulation to escape discomfort. Others realize nothing outside themselves can make them happy or fix how they feel inside. They see through the illusion of their projected self and start facing their true feelings and life's deeper questions. The key idea is that we create a false sense of identity to hide our vulnerable true self but ultimately we must face our buried feelings and let go of external illusions to find meaning and purpose. Relying endlessly on stimulation and diversion leads nowhere. The midlife period is an opportunity for this transition, though some waste it while others awaken to deeper truths. We create an ideal image of ourselves to avoid confronting painful feelings and emotions we have been repressing for a long time. We keep busy juggling many responsibilities and tasks just to prevent our lives from falling apart. Some people eventually stop running from their feelings, face them directly, and gain self-awareness. They let go of false images and facades, become honest with themselves, and are willing to sacrifice for truth. They stop wasting energy on maintaining an illusory self-image. Most relationships are based on shared experiences, emotions, and energy. When someone changes and breaks free from these bonds, it makes others uncomfortable because it threatens their own self-concepts and addictions. They may label the changed person as mentally ill to bring them back to the status quo. When we die, we lose our external realities and identities. What remains is our essential self, the feelings and emotions we never addressed in life. 
If we never evolved beyond emotions from long ago experiences, our soul's purpose was unfulfilled. Life events continue triggering the same stuck emotions. When people don't know how to change, they look to external sources for internal change, and these sources often become addictions. They need increasing intensity of stimuli to overcome desensitization. The root drive is avoiding painful feelings, but the strategies ultimately fail and the feelings remain. The summary highlights how we create facades to avoid inner truth, become emotionally entangled with others in relationships, fail to learn and grow without facing feelings, and turn to addictions that provide only temporary escape while problems persist. Self-awareness and truth are the only means to real change. People often develop addictions and habits to numb their pain, anxiety, and depression. They rely on external sources like drugs, alcohol, sex, shopping, gambling, etc. to change their inner state. But this only widens the gap between how they feel and how they present themselves. True happiness comes from within, not from pleasure or possessions. Waiting for external things to make you happy is relying on the outer to change the inner and goes against the quantum law. You have to become happy first before abundance shows up. Addictions often come from unresolved emotions that people have memorized. To overcome them, you need to confront those emotions and unmemorize them. You can do this privately through meditation and self-observation. Closing the gap between who you are and who you present to the world is challenging but important for living authentically and overcoming self-limiting behaviors. People often only change when faced with trauma or loss, but you can also change through inspiration and joy. You don't have to wait until discomfort forces you to move. Observing your negative emotional states and unmemorizing them will help you surrender those emotions to your higher self. This closes the gap and releases the energy that was maintaining it. The energy is then transferred or transformed into creating a new life. Closing the gap liberates your body and mind from the past. The energy once used to produce the gap can now be used to create a new life. In summary, addictions and unhealthy habits are often the result of unresolved negative emotions. By confronting those emotions through self-observation and meditation, you can unmemorize and release them. This closes the gap between your inner and outer self, freeing up energy to create positive change. Happiness comes from within, not from external sources. Closing the gap allows you to live authentically and overcome self-limiting patterns. Breaking free of emotional addictions and dependencies releases energy and joy. It feels like being freed from confinement. Meditation requires acknowledging how you have been thinking, feeling and behaving. You have to be honest with yourself about what you have been hiding from yourself. Then you can decide to be free. A woman named Pamela was struggling financially because her ex-husband wasn't paying child support. She was stuck in negative emotions like victimization, resentment and lack. In a meditation, Pamela realized she had to let go of the negative emotions connecting her to her ex-husband. She released the emotions and energy associated with past experiences. By releasing these negative emotions and energy, Pamela closed the gap between who she thought she was and who she presented to the world. Almost immediately, Pamela's internet business earned $10,000 and her ex-husband paid $12,000 in back child support. She created these results without conscious effort, showing the power of releasing negative emotions. Much of our creative energy is tied up in past negative emotions like guilt, judgment, fear and anxiety. We could accomplish more by converting this energy to positive, productive energy and acting from positive intentions rather than selfish survival instincts. Meditation helps us remove layers and masks blocking our inner intelligence. By removing these barriers, we become transparent, our appearance matches our true self. We experience gratitude, joy and wholeness. To close the gap, we must recognize it exists and meditate on the negative emotions that created it. See these emotions, understand them, release them. Then we can create using the freed energy. Advertisers exploit our sense of lack and longing to sell products by making us think they can fill the emptiness and help us become our ideal self. We are controlled by this notion of lack. The author's own transformation began with realizing the gap between her real and presented selves. We can be inspired to close our own gaps. The author felt like she was living two different lives, the happy, inspiring persona she showed to audiences in her lectures and the numb, unhappy person she felt like inside. She realized she had lost touch with her true self. During a period of frequent travel and lecturing, she had a realization that she needed to reconnect with her core self. She describes a pivotal moment of meditation where she surrendered aspects of her persona and reconnected with her inner being. She felt an immediate sense of joy and aliveness. She canceled her lectures and commitments for six months to focus on meditation and changing her sense of identity. Through daily meditation, she worked to unmemorize unwanted emotions and dismantle her old identity. She became happier and more joyful.
She says we have to become very aware of how we are thinking, feeling and living to the point we realize it isn't you and you don't want to be that way anymore. This realization has to reach you on a deep level. Meditation is key to this process of change. She describes meditation as becoming deeply familiar with yourself, observing your thoughts, beliefs, actions and emotions. You have to observe yourself closely enough that you don't allow any unconscious thoughts or behaviors to go unnoticed. By meditating, you can access your subconscious mind and reprogram your brain and body to a new mindset. The first step is deciding to stop being your old self, stop the thoughts, feelings and behaviors of your old identity. You separate yourself from the external world to become aware of your unconscious mind. By closing your eyes, becoming still and present, you can observe how you are thinking and feeling. Paying attention to your unconscious patterns until they become conscious is a form of meditation. The observer, your consciousness, is separate from those automatic programs and identity. This is knowing yourself. To change yourself, you need to move from being unaware and reactive to being aware and proactive. By paying attention to your habitual thoughts and behaviors, you can gain more control over them. As you stop engaging in old patterns, the neurological connections associated with them weaken. Your genes are also activated in new ways. This helps break the habit of being your old self. Contemplate what new self you want to become. Picture what it would be like, how you would think and feel. This helps build new neural connections and activates new genetic expression patterns. Repeating this process makes your new self familiar and habitual. See meditation as cultivation of the self. You need to prepare the soil, your mind, by removing weeds, old limiting beliefs, rocks, personal blocks, and last season's plants, old thoughts and behaviors. Then you can plant the seeds of your new self. Cultivation requires conscious choice and planning. The process of change is moving from the unconscious to the conscious. You need to develop observation and focus skills to become aware of your automatic patterns. Then you can break them by stopping old thoughts and behaviors, releasing the energy bound in them. Change requires unlearning the old self and learning the new one. Unlearning means pruning away neural connections and memories. Learning means forming new neural connections through repetitive thought and action. Mystics have used practices like meditation to transcend the body and ego. This is a metaphorical way of describing the biological process of breaking free from old habits of thought and forging new ones. The end result is a new self and new life path. Environment, time, and the programmed responses in our brain, the big three, control us unconsciously. We can regain control through meditation and awareness. As our brain develops, the predominant brain waves progress from slow, delta, theta, to fast. Beta. In meditation, we reverse this, moving from fast beta to slower alpha and theta. Understanding this progression helps demystify meditation. In adults, beta, 13 to 40 hertz, associated with normal waking consciousness and analytical thinking. We spend most of our day in various levels of beta. Alpha, 8 to 13 hertz, light meditative state. Associated with relaxation, imagination, and creativity. Occurs when we close our eyes, visualize, or learn something new. Theta, 4 to 8 hertz, twilight state between waking and sleeping. Associated with intuition, creativity, and access to the subconscious mind. Delta, 0.5 to 4 hertz, deep, dreamless sleep state. Little conscious awareness. The body restores itself. Gamma, 40 to 100 hertz, associated with heightened states of compassion, happiness, awareness, and transcendence. A side effect of shifts in consciousness. Three levels of beta, low beta, 13 to 15 hertz, relaxed yet focused. Alert but not agitated. Mid beta, 15 to 20 hertz, normal alert and actively engaged in daily life. Can lead to mild anxiety if overactive. High beta, 20 to 40 hertz, hyper alert and hypervigilant. Can lead to stress, anxiety, and difficulty focusing or sleeping if overactive. Repeated meditation helps us become familiar with and notice these different brain states. Here is a summary of the three levels of brainwave patterns, low range beta, 13 to 15 hertz, relaxed, interested attention. Produced when reading or doing a familiar activity. Represents conscious, rational thinking. Midrange beta, 16 to 22 hertz, focused attention. Produced during active learning or problem solving. Represents alert, attentive thinking. High range beta, 22 to 50 hertz, stressful, survival mode. Produced during emergencies or when worrying, anxious or fearful. An overfocused state of mind that is not sustainable long term. Sends chaotic signals in the brain and body, leading to imbalance and health issues. Makes it hard to focus inward or be creative. 
reasoning and thinking become impaired. The key is to avoid sustaining high range beta and learn to shift into alpha and theta brainwave states. This allows for a more balanced, coherent nervous system and mind. Our brain operates at different frequencies measured in cycles per second, known as hertz. The three main frequencies associated with thinking and problem solving are, beta, 12 to 30 hertz, associated with our awake and alert state. In beta, our thoughts can feel scattered as we process information about the environment, our body, and time. Alpha, 8 to 12 hertz, a relaxed, reflective state ideal for visualization, memory recall, and enhanced learning. In alpha, our thoughts flow more smoothly as we let go of external distractions. Theta, 4 to 8 hertz, light sleep or extreme relaxation. In theta, our subconscious mind is open and receptive to new ideas and perspectives. This is a very creative state where aha moments often emerge. When we are focused on all three areas environment, body, and time our brain has trouble integrating the varied frequencies, leading to chaotic, incoherent thoughts. Meditation helps shift our brain into alpha and theta states, allowing us to gain access to our subconscious mind. Our analytical mind, which develops between ages 6 and 12, acts as a barrier between our conscious and subconscious mind. Meditation helps us move beyond our analytical mind so we can reprogram our subconscious habits and beliefs. By reducing external stimuli and focusing our attention, meditation naturally slows our brain waves from the alert beta state into the relaxed alpha and theta states. This allows us to move from a state of survival into a more creative state where true personal transformation can occur. That covers the key highlights on how meditation helps us achieve a more coherent mode of thinking by shifting into alpha and theta brainwave states. Please let me know if you would like me to clarify or expand on any part of this summary. Meditation can shift your brain waves from beta to theta, allowing access to the subconscious mind. In theta state, the body is asleep but the mind is awake, allowing for changes to subconscious programs and unobstructed creation. The best times for meditation are morning and evening, when the door to the subconscious opens as brain chemistry changes. Meditating at these times allows for easier access to alpha and theta states. Meditation helps shift from a stressed, survival state to a relaxed, creative state. As the body relaxes, brain waves shift from beta to alpha to theta. This results in a more coherent, synchronized brain state. A coherent, synchronized brain state leads to a coherent body state, allowing the body to heal. An example is a man whose warts disappeared after meditating and reaching an expanded state of consciousness. Meditation plus action can help shift life circumstances. A woman was living in lack but started meditating and taking action by networking and promoting her business. She started receiving many new clients, and her financial situation improved, showing how inner change can lead to outer change. In summary, meditation helps access subconscious and expanded states of consciousness, which can help facilitate healing, improve life circumstances, and allow for unobstructed creation. A coherent mind state also leads to a coherent body state, and inner change precedes outer change. Consistently accessing meditative states through regular practice can have significant benefits. Monique realized that she had to stop dealing with problems in the same reactive way. She tended to take a passive approach and just accept whatever happened to her. She decided it was time for a change. Monique created a vision of the confident, proactive person she wanted to become. She imagined living with an abundance mindset as someone who had plenty of time, money, and energy. Her intention to change was firm. Monique began living as this new person. Although her problems didn't disappear, her outlook changed. While in this new mindset, she bought a lottery ticket on impulse. She ended up winning $53,000, exactly the amount she owed in debt. Monique's story shows the power of becoming a new person. Just imagining change isn't enough, you have to act differently. By developing a new personality and seizing new opportunities, Monique experienced new and better results. Change your personality, change your life. With practice, we can become more like monks who maintain a coherent, focused mental state even when engaging with the chaos of the outside world. By meditating and creating inner coherence, we can overcome negative conditions, unmemorize limiting thoughts and behaviors, and more easily access positive emotional states. Knowledge prepares us for experience. The information in this book sets the foundation for learning meditation techniques to change your mind and life. Take time to review the concepts then continue the journey to reach your full potential. Learning a meditation process through small, incremental steps is the key to changing your reality. Repeating these steps will form a habit and neural pathways in your brain that support the new mindset. To prepare, get supplies like a notebook to journal your thoughts, and guided meditations. 
find a distraction-free place to meditate daily. The suggested schedule introduces one to three new weekly steps for four weeks. Review previous actions, then add the new ones. Take your time. Week 1, practice the induction to reach an alpha brainwave state. Week 2, add recognizing, admitting slash declaring, and surrendering. Week 3, add observing slash reminding yourself and redirecting your mind. Week 4, add creating new possibilities and rehearsing new behaviors. Keep practicing and the individual steps will become one seamless process. Your body and mind will align, and the new mindset will become habitual and automatic. This systematic approach with repetition and consistency can reprogram your subconscious mind to support new, empowering ways of thinking and being. But go slowly, build a strong foundation, and be patient with yourself. Changing lifelong habits takes diligent practice. The passage discusses techniques and preparations for meditation, focusing on entering an altered state of mind. The key steps are, induction, shifting from an awake beta to a more relaxed alpha state. This is done by focusing on the body and its sensations. Two techniques discussed are the body part induction, where you focus on each part of the body in turn, and the water rising induction, where you imagine warmth rising through your body. Spending at least a week practicing installation is recommended. Preparation, things like turning off electronics, choosing a space away from distractions, sitting upright, and making time for meditation. The best times are after waking up and before bed when entering an alpha state is more accessible. Start with 10 to 20 minutes daily and build up as you add more steps. Mastering the ego and body, settling the mind and body into the present moment rather than dwelling on the past or future. This takes practice and determination. Having the right mindset, being determined, persistent, excited, joyful, flexible, and inspired and seeing meditation as reaching for the divine. The key goals are to overcome the big three obstacles of the mind, body, and environment through developing awareness and control of your thoughts. The ultimate aim is to access your creative subconscious mind. To change your personality and habits, you first need to recognize them. This involves introspection and self-observation to gain awareness of your thoughts, feelings, and behaviors. Some ways to do this include, conducting a life review where you examine how you have lived your life so far and how your actions have impacted others. This helps you gain an objective view of yourself. Asking yourself probing questions about your personality, thoughts, feelings, and behaviors. For example, what kind of person have I been? How would others describe me? What part of myself do I want to improve? Choosing a specific emotion or habit you want to change, such as anger, fear, anxiety, etc. Focusing on one at a time will make the process more manageable. Once you have recognized the parts of yourself you want to change through self-reflection, the following steps are, admitting and declaring the problem. Speak about it aloud to claim power over it. Surrendering, letting go of the old self and old habits. This is done through the meditation and mindfulness practices. By observing your thoughts and emotions in a detached way, you break the connection between your consciousness and those subconscious programs that have defined your old self. In summary, gaining awareness through self-observation, admitting what you want to change, and then surrendering the old self through meditation are critical steps to overcoming ingrained habits and transforming your personality. Consistent practice of these techniques can lead to lasting change over time. Your limited beliefs and perceptions originate from survival emotions and the ego. These emotions strengthen the ego's control and are linked neurologically and chemically. As you work to unmemorize one emotion, related emotions will also decrease. Observe how your chosen unwanted emotion feels in your body. Notice any physical sensations, changes in breathing, pain, etc. These feelings combined create the sentiment. Embrace the emotion without judgment or distraction. This emotion has motivated your identity and shaped your ideals and attachments to the past. Define the state of mind associated with your chosen emotion. This emotion and state of mind influence your thoughts and behaviors, keeping you in repetitive patterns. Observe this state of mind without judgment. Admit your true self to the universal consciousness, not the self you show to others. This is challenging, but it acknowledges your faults in something greater than human judgment. There is no punishment, judgment, manipulation, etc. Only love, compassion, and understanding. This consciousness already knows you and gives unconditionally. Admit who you have been and what you want to change to start a relationship with this greater intelligence. The universal consciousness has many names but represents unlimited power within and around you. It is intent and unconditional love, unable to judge or punish as that would be acting against itself. It knows you thoroughly, but you must try to understand it. There is an invisible, intelligent field of energy that observes and knows you. It has been with you since your creation. It waits patiently for you and only wants your happiness. 
this self-organizing field contains wisdom and knowledge of all dimensions, times, and experiences. It knows much more than our limited human minds. It can be thought of as vibrating at different frequencies, like radio waves, each frequency carries information. To change your life, you must first change your internal state. You can ask the universe for what you want, like joy, but not much will change if you continue to act like a victim and complain. You have to genuinely reflect on your habits and patterns and choose to change them. Letting go of your familiar personality and connecting to something more significant is more effective than forcing change through suffering. To do this, admit your emotional limits and stories to yourself and the higher power. Write them down. Then, speak them aloud to release their energetic hold over you. This breaks your emotional attachment to the external world, reinforcing those limits. Though difficult, declaring the truth about yourself aloud frees and returns energy to you. Finally, surrender those limits and stories to the higher power and allow it to resolve them. The human ego and limited mind could never resolve the problems it has created. Connecting to a higher consciousness opens up new potentials and ways of transforming yourself. But you must trust and allow that process to unfold. Surrendering is about releasing control and letting go. That covers the key steps and ideas presented in summary, reflecting on your limits, admitting and declaring them, and then surrendering them to a higher power to be resolved in a new way. The process frees you from restrictive habits and patterns through genuine self-reflection and connection to greater intelligence and consciousness. The key steps are, observe and become fully aware of your habitual thoughts and actions that make up your old self. Remind yourself of all the aspects of your old self you no longer want to be. Become familiar with yourself being your old personality by observing the precise thoughts and behaviors you want to change. This frees you from the past. What you mentally rehearse and physically demonstrate becomes your neurological identity. Combining your thinking and actions creates your neurological you. Observing leads to greater awareness and understanding of who you have been, metacognition. By reflecting on your old self, you get clear who you no longer want to be. Become conscious of your habitual states of mind by noticing the thoughts that drive your emotions and actions. Notice how they make you feel and behave. When you observe yourself thinking and acting in habitual ways, say to yourself, I am not this person anymore. This helps make the old self more familiar so you can let it go. Reminding yourself of your decision to change reinforces your intention and commitment. Repeating this helps rewire your brain and body to a new state of being. Remind yourself why you started this process. Review how the old you made you feel limited or caused you suffering. This motivates you to continue evolving into your new self. The main goals are becoming familiar with the habitual thoughts and actions that make up your old self, reminding yourself you want to change, and reinforcing your intention to evolve beyond your past limitations. Observing and reminding ultimately free you from the past and rewire your brain and body for a new state of being. Continuously revisiting your motivation and reasons for change keeps you progressing on your journey of self-transformation. Become familiar with your habitual thoughts, feelings, and actions that derive from your old self. By practicing awareness and mindful observation of these patterns in your daily life, you can gain control over them and prevent them from manifesting. Notice the earliest signs that your old, limiting thoughts and behaviors are about to emerge. The more you can sense these patterns starting to arise, the sooner you can confront them. For example, noticing cravings and urges to engage in addictive behaviors allows you to battle them before giving in. Your thoughts, feelings, and behaviors are conditioned patterns that have become hardwired in your brain through repetition. Although an idea may rise, that doesn't mean it's true or you must act on it, the question is whether acting on an impulse will lead to the same unwanted outcome. Unwanted thoughts and behaviors are echoes of your past that activate old neural pathways, causing predictable reactions. Rewiring your brain requires interrupting these patterns. Write down your habitual thoughts and behaviors related to the unwanted emotion you want to overcome. Memorize these to strengthen your awareness of how you no longer wish to think and act. Review and refine this list over time. During meditation, visualize situations where you typically think and behave in unconscious, limiting ways. Say change. Out loud to interrupt these patterns. Your voice can become the loudest in your head, redirecting you to a new way of being. In daily life, say change. When you notice an old, limiting thought or behavior emerging. This helps weaken the connections between the neural networks that comprise your old self. Through consistency, you can gain control over your unconscious mind. You have spent the past few weeks unlearning limiting aspects of your old self through meditation and self-reflection. Now it is time to create a new self and a new mind. This involves sprouting new neural connections that will form the basis of your reinvented identity. To create the new you, continue meditating and reflecting on pruning away further from the old self. 
learn new information to plant the seeds for your unique self. Study role models who represent your ideal new identity. Be creative in imagining your new self. The more details you can envision, the more fully realized your new identity will become. Apply focused intention and attention to develop your new self, like tending a garden. Mentally rehearse scenarios involving your new self to strengthen new neural pathways. Repeatedly imagine how your new self would think, feel, and act. Step by step, the new neural connections will form the basis for your unique mind and new self. Your thoughts, feelings, and actions will increasingly align with this new identity. Through sustained creative effort, you can reinvent yourself by developing a new mind with new patterns and habits. Your life will blossom with new possibilities as you leave the old self behind. The rewards of positive change will become apparent as you continue progressing into your new future. To manifest your dreams and new future in your garden, reality, do the following. Emotionally enjoy and feel joy for your new future before it shows up. This raises your energy and protects your vision. Fall in love with the vision of your new self. This nurtures your imagination like fertilizer. Love is a higher frequency emotion than survival emotions that allow weeds, old habits, and pests, doubts, in. Eliminate the old to make way for the new. This is transformation. Practice creating a new mindset repeatedly until it becomes familiar. The more you repeat a thought pattern, the more it becomes wired in your brain and body. Practice imagining your new self daily. Ask open-ended questions to activate your frontal lobe and spark new ways of thinking. Questions like, what is my most fabulous ideal self? Who do I admire and want to model? How would I think slash act slash feel if I were my ideal self? Answer these and review and reflect on your answers. Meditate to reproduce this new level of mind and the associated feelings daily. Change must happen in the present moment. Get up as a new person. Don't make excuses. Use your will and intention. Review and rehearse how you will think, act and feel as your new ideal self. Be imaginative and accessible. Your goal is to embody a new state of being. Repeating this, like the mentally rehearsed piano players, will change your brain and body. Practice until you become unconsciously skilled at being your new self. Although it may feel dull, it persists until it becomes second nature. Repetition engraves the new you into memory to become more subconscious and natural. Practice makes perfect. With practice, embodying your new self should get easier. Your brain and body chemistry are primed, and your old circuits are subdued. Keep learning, paying attention, and repeating to rewire your brain and body. Here is a summary of the key points regarding term relationships between nerve cells. Repetition is key to forming new neural connections and circuits in the brain. Repeated mental rehearsal of new thoughts, feelings, and behaviors leads to the growth of new neural pathways. Kathy's story shows how mental rehearsal and repetition can lead to physical changes in the brain and body. After a stroke damaged her language center, Kathy mentally rehearsed speaking to groups daily. Over time, this repeated mental rehearsal led to the repair of her language center and the restoration of her speech. Frequency, intensity, and duration are essential for effective mental rehearsal. The more often you do it, the more focused and concentrated you are, and the longer you can sustain your cognitive trial, the more effective it will be. Becoming a new personality leads to a new reality. How you think, feel, and act creates your reality. Adopting a unique character through mental rehearsal creates a new state of being, leading to a new destiny and new experiences. From an elevated state of energy and emotion, visualize the specific events and experiences you want to create in your new life. Hold the images in your mind and then release them to the quantum to be manifested. Have faith that what you intend will come about in unexpected ways. A guided meditation is provided to help reinvent a new self through mental rehearsal and visualization. The meditation involves, 1. Moving into a new state of being with a new mindset and emotions, 2. Repeating and reinforcing this new state of being, and, 3. From this new state, visualizing specific life events and experiences you want to manifest. Release these visions with trust in the quantum field. A two-way communication between your conscious mind and the quantum mind or greater consciousness can develop. The quantum mind will demonstrate it received your messages through meaningful coincidences and events in your life. You build a relationship with this greater intelligence. You cannot continue as the same person you were when you started meditating. It would help to remind yourself you want to become when you open your eyes. Plan how you will act in your new reality. Imagine what it will feel like to be your ideal self. Think of yourself as a new person who does certain things thinks in specific ways, and feels certain emotions like joy and inspiration. Become so focused on your intention that you go from thinking about a new self to experiencing and being that new self. Practice being your new ideal self repeatedly until you can easily recall it and bring it out whenever you want. 
memorize what it feels like to be in this new state. From this ideal state of mind, decide what you want in your future life. Visualize your future desires with certainty and knowing, as if yours. Let the images of your future unfold and then release them to be fulfilled. Experience the joy of your new future now. Where you place your attention is where you put your energy. Use that energy to create your new future. To continue progressing, meditate daily. The process will become simpler and flow more easily. At first, guided meditations can be helpful, but you can let them go as you become proficient. Periodically reevaluate your life and meditations. Look for new aspects of yourself you want to change or improve. Adjust your reflections by focusing on new areas or combining multiple regions. Create a new future as needed. Change up your meditations to avoid stagnation. To deepen your understanding, read related books, attend workshops, participate in teleclasses, and use other resources. Build on what you've learned. Demonstrate and be your new self in your daily life. Maintain your changed energy and way of being no matter what is happening around you. When your actions match your intentions, you will create change. Your environment will no longer control you but will maintain your environment. This leads to freedom and joy. When your mind and body are in harmony, you become a new being with a unique personality and reality. You must maintain this change and not revert to your old self. Memorize your new self and consistently act as this new self. Demonstration means living as if your new reality has already happened. Act with the same energy and mindset as when you created your new ideal. Look for feedback like synchronicities, opportunities, insights, and new relationships. This shows you are living by the quantum law. Correlate your inner world and outer manifestations. Prompt yourself throughout the day to stay in the energy of your new self. Review how you did and make a plan to improve. Become transparent by reflecting your inner self in your outer world. Your life reorganizes to match your new mind. There will be a moment when you realize your mind created your new beautiful events. You will see how your past led to this and accept it all. Connecting to universal consciousness makes you feel more like your true self. You unlock higher energy and love. A paradox is the more divine you become, the more human you feel. The main message is that you can transform your reality by maintaining a new mental and emotional state. You become a new self with a new life. Consistently act from this new state, look for signs it's working, review your progress, and ultimately become transparent as your outer world reflects this inner change. This allows higher consciousness to flow through you, leading to feelings of love, divinity, and humanity. Once you achieve a sense of wholeness and connection with your true self, your desires and wants diminish. Wishes stem from a sense of lack or incompleteness, but you feel complete in this state of totality. This state of wholeness leads to unconditional love, a feeling of love and all for life without needing anything. You are no longer attached to external things and don't emotionally react to life's changes. You express divine qualities like love, mindfulness, generosity, and kindness. In this elevated state, you want to share your joy with others through gifts and acts of kindness. You become selfless. To create from this state of wholeness, you must know you are one with what you desire. Your creations feel natural, easy, and right. You receive feedback and signs from the universe slash higher intelligence that inspire you to continue creating. Our purpose is to remove masks and blocks that prevent the flow of higher intelligence through us, ask questions that lead to greater possibilities, expect miracles, and open our minds to more. We evolve by healing ourselves and others and pondering our achievements and the uncommon. We have been lied to that we are only physical beings in a material world, separate from the higher intelligence within and around us. But we are multidimensional beings who create our reality. We must lose our limited minds and create new ones. Though uncomfortable, the unknown void between our old and new minds is fertile ground. Here we access infinite potential and the power to biologically and energetically change ourselves. We break free from limiting beliefs and look outside ourselves for happiness. Our true self is the higher intelligence within an energetic consciousness that feels like love. We can always access it but struggle if we only believe in the material world. We must focus inward, not just outward, to expand this reality. We are free to focus our attention and energy wherever we choose. Managing this power is critical. Where we put our thoughts and awareness shapes our reality. Here is a summary of the passage, thoughts and beliefs shape our reality. What we think and believe mentally becomes real in the physical world. We must overcome limited beliefs and habits to achieve our full potential. We must consciously try to create new empowering habits and ways of thinking. Through practice and repetition, we can rewire our mind and body to express our divine nature. We must shed layers of emotions, perceptions, and traits that hold us back. There is an infinite, benevolent aspect of ourselves waiting to be expressed. 
By removing obstacles in our way, we can tap into our infinite power and express our true selves. The most excellent habit to break is the habit of being our limited self. The most excellent habit of creating is expressing our divine self. Relax your body and mind through deep breathing. Connect with the powerful intelligence within you that gives you life and loves you. Match your will, mind, and love for life with this intelligence. Recognize the familiar emotions and state of mind you want to change. Admit them to the intelligence within. Declare your desire to free your body and energy from these familiar emotions. Release them from your body and environment. Surrender your limitations to the infinite intelligence within. Please open the door and let go, allowing it to remove your limitations. Observe your habitual thoughts, behaviors, and actions connected to the old emotions. Remind yourself you no longer want to be this way. Redirect yourself by saying change. When old feelings and habits arise, this will rewire your brain and body. Create a new vision of your most fabulous self. Move into a new state of being by thinking, feeling, and acting as this self. Let the experience become a mood and a new personality. Rehearse, becoming your new self again. Fire and wire a new mindset and recondition your body to new emotions. See, feel, and become empowered as this new self. Envision events you want to experience from this new state of being. Let these visions collapse into experiences in your life. Your energy will become entangled with this new destiny. Do not try to figure out how your visions will happen. Your role is to create. The greater intelligence will handle details. Become an observer of your life and bless it with energy and gratitude. Feel as though your desires have already manifested. Live in a state of gratitude and receivership. Feel how you will feel when your goals manifest. Ask the universe for a sign that it is listening. Move into a new state of mind and body. Give thanks for a new life. The subconscious mind makes up 95% of the mind and runs our lives. We can retrain it through mental rehearsal and intentional thinking. The quantum model says that reality is made of vibrations. Lower vibrations mean denser matter. Emotions like stress lower our vibrations. We can raise them through focus and awareness. The frontal lobe allows us to perceive beyond the senses. It gives us free will and the power to change our minds. We can strengthen it through mental practice. The heart's electromagnetic field sends information to the brain, influencing our perceptions and behaviors. Entering heart coherence raises our vibrations. Neurofeedback shows our brain wave patterns so we can learn to change them. Slow, linear feedback lets us see cause and effect to gain awareness and control. Meditation produces high amplitude gamma brain waves, showing a unified brain. Retreats provide space to amplify meditation effects. Open focus expands awareness. Practice the body part induction. Guide awareness to the space each body part occupies. This produces alpha brain waves for deep relaxation and meditation. The author thanks all those at Hay House and others who have supported the creation of this work. The author expresses his gratitude and thanks to the following people, Alex Freeman, the Hay House Project Editor, for the honest feedback, encouragement, and expertise. Gary Brozek and Ellen Fontana for contributing to the work in their ways. Sarah J. Steinberg, the personal editor, for taking the journey together again. John Dispenza for creating the cover design. Laura Schumann for creating the graphics and art for the book's interior. Bob Stewart for contributing to the cover art. Paula Meyer, the personal assistant, for her attention to detail. The rest of the Encephalon team, including Chris Richard, Beth, and Steve O. Wolfson, Christina Othpili Quetta, and Scott Herculiani. The staff at his clinic included Dana Reichel. The office manager, Dr. Marvin Kunikio, Elena Clausen, Danielle Hall, Jenny Perez, Amy Sheffer, Bruce Armstrong, and Irma Lehman. The people worldwide who have applied these ideas to their lives. Dr. Daniel, amen for contributing the foreword. His mother, Fran Dispenza, for teaching him to be strong, loving, and determined. His children for their consistent support and showing virtue. Roberta Brittingham, his love, for being light, grace, nobility and love. The author studied biochemistry and neuroscience and received his Doctor of Chiropractic degree. He has postgraduate training in neurology, neuroscience, brain function, memory formation, and aging. He has lectured in over 24 countries on reprogramming thinking through neurophysiological principles. His work shows how changing thoughts and beliefs can rewire the brain. His first book explores the connection between thought, consciousness, and the brain. He sees patients at his clinic and also serves as an editorial advisor. Book link, click here.